Welcome to Sharp Cover Lit. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for a quickie. This will be a quickie of Stephen King's novel, The Shining. So, what is The Shining? The Shining by Stephen King was published in 1977, January 28th, 1977. It was his third novel, and it is 447 pages. It is a story of struggling writer Jack Torrance as he takes a job as an off-season caretaker at the Overlook Hotel. His wife, Wendy, and son, Danny, accompany him. Turns out Danny sees dead people, Jack is an alcoholic, and Wendy is tougher than a John Wayne snot rocket. Throw these three in a blender, in a shaker, pour ghosts on top, shake room 217 times, and you have a Stephen King novel. Three great quotes. Number one, are you sure self-pity is a luxury you can afford, Jack? Number two, sometimes human places create inhuman monsters. And number three, Living by your wits is always knowing where the wasps are. The, uh, the Return to Wasps by Stephen King. Three, sell it with a sentence. A Jack Nicholson fan fiction that was later turned into a movie where Jack Nicholson plays Jack Torrance, playing Jack Nicholson, which finally convinced the actor that yes, that is all you have to do. The three best things. This is, in my estimation and to my liking, the most literary of the Stephen King novels that I have come across so far. Two, each of the three main characters has an entire novel and narrative authorial decisions in their respective parts to this novel in a way that is truly inspiring and intimidating to a writer. And number three, this is mainstream America's introduction to the furry fetish phenomenon. The three worst things. Um, in football terms, the delivery is all of the motion that happens between the quarterback setting their plant foot and releasing the football. In that time, the defense gets to react to what is going to happen. And if the delivery is too long, bad things happen for the offense, right? Interceptions, batted passes, knockdowns, things like that. A reader's defense is deciding whether or not he or she is going to keep going with a novel. In that way, the delivery for The Shining is massive, very slow. There's a huge build-up to anything going on, and I think it would be very easy to decide that you're not going to keep reading in that time. Number two, Jack is the most interesting character in the novel. That is, he's the hardest to look away from. But Wendy serves, to be, Wendy serves to be the most profitable for the reader, especially in regards to actual horror. Unfortunately, she disappears for large chunks of this novel. And three, there are times when the horror becomes a bit cartoony. Uh, there's a scene with Jack in the boiler room that comes to mind immediately. Three themes and or literary qualities. One, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Jack had an abusive father and grew up, had a child, and is in the process of abusing said child as the novel is taking place. And the swings between the lovable father and the manic, uh, to the manic lovable father and the manic violent father are perfect for creating a son who grows up to be abusive as well. Two colors. Danny has the shining. Well, when something is in the dark, the colors are muted. When you shine a light on it, those colors become more pronounced, more brilliant. Uh, I've struggled for years to make something of all of the colors that are mentioned in this novel. When you read it, the colors really stand out, more than uh, any other Stephen King text especially. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. You know, is there a difference between the hot and cold colors? Uh, I'm really not sure. I would I would love to hear from you in the comments below if you if you have any inkling of an idea what might be going on there. Uh, also, Danny is born with his eyes covered, sight, and uh, the hotel is called the Overlook Hotel. Number three, nature versus creation. Jack and his family both have to battle natural elements such as the mountains on the way to the Overlook Hotel, which almost kills the car, in the cold which is the cold and the snow, which are why the uh, hotel is deserted in the first place. Um, also, they are battling 
the car, which almost dies. They are battling the hotel itself. Both of those things are man-made. But to me, the most stark example is those damned creepy bushes, right? Uh, hedges are natural, but they are shaped creatively. They are shaped in a man-made way. But they are creatively shaped to look like animals, which are natural. So I think there's, uh, I think the author's playing with that a bit as well. Three questions for further discussion. One, what becomes of Danny Torrance? Now, King has already answered this question in the sequel to The Shining, known as Dr. Sleep. Unfortunately, I have not yet read that. Two, Danny was the gifted one, but it was Jack who showed a stunning susceptibility to supernatural elements. Did he have some level of The Shining as well, and is that how it was passed to Danny? Three, in this father-son dynamic, perhaps Jack does not have The Shining. But did the Overlook lure him in? He traveled some distance just to get an interview for a type of job, which he had never held before, and that much seems fishy. So three recommendations based on whether or not you liked The Shining. One on writing by Stephen King. Um, I think The Shining, more than any of the other Stephen King novels that I have read, in addition to being the most literary, is also also makes it the most easy to fall into like with Stephen King. Um, on writing shows you where all that came from. Two, Stone Animals by Kelly Link. To me, Link's short story seems to have elements of horror in it. And even if it doesn't, it reads like a uh, complimentary text almost to The Shining. Uh, if not through the themes and genre, then at least through the ambiance which the story presents. Three, Now is the Hour by Tom Spanbauer. For an interesting father-son, mother-son dynamic uh, that, is a, that is different but also complimentary, this small family tale has a lot of energy and revolves around a son that seems to see things a bit differently than the rest of the world around him. Finally, the rating. I give this novel 88 bush animals out of 100.